Hello, I'm Julia Sherwood and I'll be reading an extract from Europe Must Be for the 99% by Apolena Rychlíková. It's a translation from the Czech. On a recent business trip to France, I visited Marseille. I had only a few hours to stroll around the city I hadn't seen in years. In the middle of a public square, I saw scorched barricades broken windows and hundreds of people camping out. Outside the university campus, shopping trolleys full of bedding had piled up, improvised dwellings that added an unusual touch to the space, blending with it in a way that seemed strangely natural. The people hanging around the park had nowhere to go. They had no home. Housing has become one of today's battlegrounds as have working conditions. The difference between those who have, or rather those who own, and those who don't have and don't own, but still have to live somewhere and on something, are becoming more and more pronounced. Yet we avert our gaze. How many people in our society freeze to death just because they have nowhere to go? And who is to blame for it? All I had to do was travel a few hundred kilometres to find myself on the Côte d'Azur, watching the sky-blue waves lap against the shore and wonder what this town, so idyllic at first sight, would look like a few years from now. The yachts lining the marina were gently bobbing on the waves. Once climate change hits with full force, the owners and their families will be able to move on and continue to live as before. They have somewhere to go. But what about the others? Just move to the country, I was told by a politician during a mother's protest against the city authorities in action during a period of intense smog. It was almost impossible to go out with children and pensioners, the sick and other vulnerable groups were just as badly affected. Meanwhile, this politician climbed into the SUV outside his house and drove to his office without a worry in this world, casually fobbing us off with this platitude without realising how inappropriate it was. One of the problems of the times we live in is that finding the culprits is difficult. It sounds so crass. Are we even allowed to ask whose fault it is? But the world is full of conflict and there are so many of us here and that is why we shouldn't always seek consensus. A person who can barely meet their basic needs can't be happy just because it's what those who can meet them easily and many times over wish. That is partly why a discussion about responsibility ought to be on our mind. If for no other reason than for us to be better able to identify it and be aware of it. And it's not just each individual's responsibility for her or himself, but first and foremost for others, for those who haven't been as fortunate in life, who can't flaunt their good education and social, cultural and financial capital. Surely this shouldn't deprive them of the right to a dignified and high quality life.